Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to take on the galley. Now, a little unconventional the way I'm doing this one, but I'll get into exactly why I'm doing it in the video. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, this is how I'm setting up this camper. Okay, this camper is a little bit different than your average camper. Okay, you and I just camp you know a couple two three even four times a year usually some way more and i understand that but um this camper is being built for somebody that's going to live in it okay so the reason why i'm doing the galley this way and as you can see these are just like stick built walls the reason why i'm going to do it this way is because we are going to insulate this back wall and um this is going to be the easiest way to do that and another reason we're doing it this way is for weight. Okay, this weighs a lot less than plywood, I think, would. And it also allows you to insulate in between, in the walls like you're supposed to. So, if you're not going to build it like this, this, this way is pretty simple. Um, it's just inch and a half. You know, it's the same as the roof spars that I took, except for the bottom. The bottom section is actually like roof... Uh, furring strips um but the countertop and the actual the bulk the wall up here is actually structural so that's why i built it out of the same materials as the spar when, and what they do is they keep the walls from from bowing out so that was pretty important that it was built kind of stronger the bottom was built out of furring strips and for more than one reason first reason is is we are we actually built this camper to accommodate a residential full uh residential queen size mattress so that's why the galley is so short on the bottom but the reason i did that wall that way on the bottom the bottom wall is if she decides that she doesn't need that extra room on the in on the inside she can always buy another mattress and we're going to make the panel here in the galley removable so she can move that wall back if she ever decided to get a smaller mattress or, or not as long mattress because right now this is an eight foot long camper and it's 70 the the mattress is 78 inches long so that leaves very little room here so we offset the cabinet in the bulk to give her the bulkhead to give her the room that she needs on the countertop but that wall at the bottom should she ever get a shorter mattress she can push she could take the screws out here, here, and in the walls, and they're also mounted here, and move that whole wall back to give her more room in her galley if she decides that's the way she wants to do it later. So now we're at this point. I'll back up a little bit so you can kind of get the gist of the whole thing. We're at this point. We're ready to start skinning. We're going to skin one side of the wall with, uh, with the same material that we've been using for the for up here and also the inside skin which is a 2.7 millimeter utility plywood if you take your time you can pick out some really nice ones that have really nice wood grain which you'll see here in a minute when I turn the camera back on but we're gonna we're gonna skin this and then I'm gonna take a router that's a pass-through we're gonna cut that out with the router so that's done and then we'll insulate from the other side and we'll run the main 120 line for the shore power is going to come down here and under the cabinet and out the side. The um, outlet power is going to come down the other side. Um, go into First it will go into a GFI and then the box below is for the inside, which will also be GFI protected. We're going to, I'm going to piggyback it off of that, off of the original uh, GFI. So both outlets will be GFI protected. I'm doing it this way for them reasons. Um, normally on a normal camper, what I would do is none of this would be here. This would all be plywood. Um, this would be three quarter inch plywood. I'd take pocket holes along the side and take them into the walls. This would actually be one wall straight down. I try to do it that way every time. Sometimes you can't, you got to stagger it and that's fine. Again, that would be three-quarter inch straight down to the floor. There would be pocket holes on that side, pocket holes on this side, pocket holes on the top where it would tie into a spar, and also pocket holes on the bottom where it would tie into the uh, 
to into the floor and glue along all the edges. So the different, you know, it's big difference in the two different ways, but they both do the same thing. This way, I've done it this way for the reasons I listed. We need an insulated bulkhead, and we also need uh, weight reduction. Um, Cricket's pulling this with a Cadillac car, so the lighter the better, less wear and tear on her vehicle. So that's why we're doing it this way and not with the plywood straight down and the plywood. Now this will get a, a sheet of plywood before I skin the top, but we're going to, we just decided today, because she's living in it, and I have an extra sink here, we're going to just put it, it's what I call a dry sink. So there'll be a sink. We're going to raise this up a little bit, and her sink will sit up a little bit higher. Her drain will be here so she can put a bucket or something underneath. But at least it gives her the ability to wash her hands and wash dishes or whatever she needs to do. So that's the plan. We're going to raise this up just where the sink goes. We're going to raise it up a little bit, drop the sink in. The reason why we can't just drop it in is because of this wall. The sink will hit this wall. So we're going to raise this up a little bit so the sink won't hit this back wall. And it, I think it'll look really good. This will have a nice, this will be higher. And then it'll drop down and this will all be one level for whatever else she wants to do. Another good thing that she brought up is things, when it's done that way, things can just fall into the sink. So if you have your phone sitting next to your sink or you turn around your coat or something hits it, it won't go bloop into your sink. So it's another, it didn't even think of it that way. She actually thought of that, and I agree with her. So that's what we're going to do. I'll bring you back when we start the skinning process. And or you, By skinning, I mean we're just putting the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the same utility plywood that we use for the ceiling and the roof. Um, on these back walls, and then we'll go inside, finish the wiring, insulate it, and then put that piece on too. So we've already got the, the electrical outlet cut, and the way I did that is I just laid it up there. I had her go inside and trace it with a pencil. Take it out, drill a couple holes, take your jigsaw, and cut it out, and it, it fits perfectly. As you can see, here's a piece here. I'll show you real quick. So that'll go here, and as you can see, and don't worry about messing up around here because it's still going to have a plate on it. So if it's a little rough around the edges, it's not a big deal. But that's the part that goes there, so we took and marked the boxes out and cut them out before, so we don't have to struggle with it. So other than that, we're going to get everything ready, and we'll bring, I'm going to uh, load you on a different camera that's a little closer. And we'll, have, we'll put that camera inside so you can try to see what's going on on both sides of the wall. So like I said, I'm just going to put this up here. Alright, so now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and pin it. i got to figure out where that's at. Well, we know there's one all the way across the bottom. decided to go against cabinets in here because they'll be really small so we're just going to do a shelf across the top. I think it'll utilize the space a lot better. Before I put the, before I put the, uh, this skin on, it would need, 
it needs plywood. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do the bottom now. And actually, because it's built to be movable later, what we're going to do is we're just going to screw that panel on. We're just going to put some screws at the top and at the bottom. So if she ever needs to, we'll staple it from the inside. But from the outside, we need to leave one side accessible so she can remove the screws and scoot that back should she ever buy a shorter mattress or have the need for a deeper underneath on the galley. So that's what we're going to do. So I don't need that. I mean, run, I think it's right here. So we got that piece cut too. Now we're just going to take some pocket screws and leave that uh, and screw that in in the corners and across the top and a few at the bottom so it's removable should it need be later. We're going to put one at each so it's, it's in there good but we're using screws so it can be taken out if need be. pocket screws because they, they, they don't look too bad instead of like a regular screw. So that's in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the other side and cut insulation. You know, we're going to cut insulation and start filling all the voids from the other side. And then we'll wire in <coughs> the electrical outlets and then we can skin the inside. Okay, it's installed now. I won't be able to use a router to cut out the pass through through the whole the whole thing because of the spars in a way. So what what I can't get with the router, I will get with an oscillating tool and you'll see that here in a second too. I'm going to want to ride the blade flat on the spar so I get a nice even cut and take, let the blade do the work so you don't get frays in the, in the uh, plywood. So it's a little, little rough around the edges. We're going to take a little sander and uh, sand it up a little bit. We may even take some trim and trim it out a little bit later just depending on how that finishes out. So that's how I, any opening I have, I try to use a router to cut it. It's just an easier way to do it. And then as you see, it was pretty easy to follow up with just the uh, oscillating tool. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I sure hope you found the video useful. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, comments on what you didn't like. Next week, we're going to take on the skin. We're getting pretty close to the finish line. So until then, build on.